Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the mystery of our beautiful Saturn. Probably one of the most beautiful planets out there, or at least in our solar system. This shot was actually taken by Cassini a few years ago and even today it kind of gives me this feeling of awe and inspiration. Today we're going to be talking about a very unusual gap in the rings of this beautiful giant that was always very mysterious and never really explained well. And we're going to find out what new discovery suggests. Something that might actually apply to exoplanets as well. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So for the longest time, um, before I kind of started studying astronomy full time, I always believe that um, a lot of these gaps in the um, rings of Saturn are formed by various rocks, like for example, miniature moons, well, basically moons in general. And um, you can kind of see that I wasn't really off in my assumption because a lot of them, like this one right there, Pan, seem to be um, orbiting in these gaps. But then there's this really large gap in the middle known as Cassini division, that I also believed was formed by some kind of a large um, moon. But when I started thinking about it, I couldn't really figure out which moon it was. At first I thought it was maybe Pandora, but Pandora orbits farther away. And if you watch closer, you'll see that nothing ever really passes here. It's sort of empty. It's literally completely devoid of any object, clearing it um, and creating this unusual gap that's roughly around 4,500 kilometers or about 3,000 miles in size. So, how exactly was the so-called Cassini division formed? Here's another look at this from the side, where you can see the Cassini division is right there, with a few more gaps here and there, but a lot of them are actually formed by various moons. And of course, the very large E-ring that we now believe is formed by the um, eruptions from Enceladus. And then there's Titan um, somewhere to the right. And so obviously I was wrong in my assumption, thinking that it's a moon, because it's not. As a matter of fact, today, um, because of the study specifically, we now believe that seeing large gaps like this indicates that the moon is not really in that gap. It's elsewhere. In other words, something else is causing the rings to form in such a way where the gap becomes visible, but it's an interaction with um, a gravitational field from another object. And to find this culprit, the scientists behind this particular paper that you can find in the description below had to look at other moons, other moons in the vicinity. Now, can you take a guess which one may have formed this? And if so, why? And to figure all of this out, the scientists behind this paper took a look at what's known as planetary or orbital resonance. That's when um, objects in orbit form a kind of a relationship um, that becomes really stable over time. In this case, um, a typical example of resonance would be from the neighboring Jupiter that has a very well-established resonance of its moons. And here, if you look at this from the side, you'll notice that for every four orbits of the closest moon, which is Io, the second moon, which is Europa, does two orbits. And the third moon, which is Ganymede, does one. So the resonance here is 4 to 1, 2 to 1, and lastly, Io has 1 to 1. Um, the last moon, which is Callisto, is not in resonance, um, which has never really been well explained, but it's probably because it's farther away. But the three moons here are in resonance. And so something very similar is happening here around Saturn as well. But it's actually the resonance between the moons, some of the moons, and the rings. And specifically here, if you were to look at this gap and try to figure out what is in resonance with it, you discover that there is one moon that fits this perfectly. And that moon is the super famous, weirdly shaped moon known as Mimas that sort of kind of resembles the Death Star from Star Wars because of this unusual formation that was created by a collision a long time ago. And interestingly, Mimas lies at a 2 to 1 resonance with the um, Cassini division. So here, if you were to look at this from top, for every one orbit of uh, Mimas, the imaginary gap um, right there, the Cassini division gap, is orbiting um, twice. And that's of course if there's anything left to orbit. Uh, there's a few particles here and there, but for the most part they're all gone. And the scientists behind this paper believe that the way that this was formed 
is by having Mimas move closer to Saturn um, roughly around 10 million years ago, or actually within the last 10 million years. Um, now it's actually moving away from Saturn, but something made it move closer and created this gap in the same way that um, I guess you could call it a kind of a remote um, snow shovel in a sense, because technically it's um, shoveling away all of this icy snow that's created here through billions and trillions of particles interacting with one another. Now, um, all of this is done through essentially gravitational interaction and no actual object needs to be there um, in the middle of the ring to remove all of these particles. All of this is done by Mimas creating this resonance. But in order for Mimas to come um, closer to the planet, it also needs to lose some energy. And the only reason uh, or the only way this energy can be lost is by releasing it as heat. So this actually explains why uh, Cassini was able to discover liquid ocean inside Mimas. But there's another paper that these scientists released, and it's also in the description below, that connects the interaction of Mimas with Enceladus. In other words, it actually suggests that it wasn't just Mimas doing this, but instead it was a kind of a gravitational union between Mimas and Enceladus that caused both of these objects to, um, well, essentially release energy as heat. And in case of Enceladus, it created these beautiful geysers, the picture of which we were able to snap using Cassini, while at the same time, all of these geysers and all these particles being released by Enceladus are also responsible for the formation of the extremely large E-ring that's created by Enceladus. So in other words, if you were to connect this whole story together, it's actually kind of mind-blowing. So these two objects, Mimas and Enceladus, were somehow dragged closer to Saturn by something we don't really know what yet, and because of this they had to lose energy and thus created a lot of heat. The heat in Mimas didn't really result in much, but the heat in Enceladus created these geysers, creating the E-ring, and thus also creating the mysterious and beautiful gap known as the Cassini division. Now, altogether, this story is quite amazing and is actually very scientifically sound. There's a lot of uh, math behind it, there's a lot of uh, valid uh, actual observations, but most importantly, it provides us with a very important understanding of gaps in rings. If we actually detect a very large gap in the ring of an exoplanet, what this may suggest is that something similar may have happened there. So an object like a large moon or potentially almost like a planetary sized moon could have been moved closer to a gas giant, releasing a lot of heat, forming an internal ocean and thus creating a world underneath, potentially habitable world, potentially life. So this is a huge discovery. It suggests that a lot of those rings we've discovered around other exoplanets, with the most famous one being, being this huge giant about which I've talked about a few years ago, J1407b, where we've discovered huge rings and a lot of gaps. A lot of gaps. Now, recent analysis suggested that some of these moons may not exist, but because there are so many gaps, there are actually possibilities of discovering a lot of moons on the outskirts of these gaps. In other words, we need to look at the resonance and we need to try to find more relationship between the resonances and formation of these very large gaps in rings. So this um, discovery now means that we could potentially discover exomoons by just looking at the gaps in rings and then analyzing the area where they might be located, thus actually maybe even seeing them. But according to this study, the modern-day Mimas and Enceladus are moving away from Saturn, and so in the next 40 million years, they will most likely close the gap again, and so the Cassini division may not actually exist anymore. But for now, this is a brilliant discovery, a very, very interesting analysis, and definitely solves the mystery of the Cassini division once and for all. Hopefully in the next few years we'll also discover some exoplanets with rings where we can test this idea and this hypothesis. But for now I'm actually pretty excited that we were able to finally explain once and for all what may have happened and how all of this led to both Mimas and Enceladus getting this unusual ocean that they have today. And most importantly all of this connects with the E-ring and the creation of the beautiful geysers on Enceladus that were discovered by Cassini a few years ago. But anyway, on that note, until we discover something new, I'm going to stop this here, and once we discover something else exciting about the rings of Saturn, I'll most likely make another video where all of these new findings will be described. 
Until then though, come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me a lot. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.